Estamos on a line. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Benavidos. Um, I'm Al Levine, and we're starting our very first UD, UD Geogora Hangout. So we hope uh, people are tuning in to the uh, Google event page. And today we're going to do hopefully what we'll do every week as to prevent um, a live event for discussion uh, with us present. And hopefully as we go, we will invite uh, other p participants to join us in the Google Hangout part. Um, everybody else can watch. Um, this will all be recorded, so it's available as an archive uh, if you can't be at the live event. And for those possibly new or have only done a few Google Hangouts, it may generate ideas um, for things that you can do in, in your own class. But first, let's everybody uh, say hello, and I, I will uh, pass it over to uh, Kike. Hola, ¿cómo están? Es un gusto estar transmitiendo en directo, y bueno... Eh, muy entusiasmado trabajando en la parte en línea de UDG Agora, entonces esperemos que sea de provecho para todos y que compartamos las ideas y cómo están surgiendo nuestras implementaciones de retos. Excelente. Y Ken. Ok, so I'm, I'm controlling the camera here, so it goes to the right person. Uh, buenos días, Ken Bauer. I can speak English or I puedo hablar español. Uh, estoy pues aquí para servirles y bienvenidos al. Pues el parte en línea de ahora. And I'll pass it on to Terry. To me? Okay, what Kike said. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm practicing my Spanish every day, but I'm still a little, a little uh, the vergüenza to speak it too much. Anyway, um, hi everyone. And Nancy. Chocolate. <laughs> great, great to see everybody, and I am really enjoying reconnecting online. So Great, thanks. Gracias. Hi, everyone. This is Tanis. Um, it's great to connect with uh, some of you again online. Um, you're going to maybe be hearing a little bit of noise in the background. I have some um, nieces over today, and they're leaving for the airport. So I might be stepping out briefly to say goodbye to them. Um, but it's great that we have some interest to learn a bit more about how to use DLO. It's new for us as well, so um, you aren't alone in um, learning how to navigate it and use it. Um, which is part of the fun of um, doing this. Um, the DLO space is a place for you to get support from your instructors, but also from the broader, um, your broader group of students. Each instructor has about between 40 and 45 um, participants with them. And so there's a lot of um, potential to work together and to share ideas and to get feedback um, beyond your triad and from your instructor and your other students that are in your group. Um, Alan's going to explain some of the really important areas that you might want to be paying attention to in DLO, but um, really this is just a, an additional interactive space for us to support um, our learning for the next eight weeks. And yes, as Alan said, there'll be other activities that will be happening to keep you engaged and motivated while we are doing this online part. So thank you. I'm glad you could be here. All right. Thank you very much, Tanis. And of course, uh, in subsequent weeks, this first week has obviously been a bit of um, setup and time to get everybody acquainted and logged into uh, the DLO. Um, can only I control the camera, actually. So. Okay. I'll let you have it. <laughs> Janice, you might want to mute your mic. Oh, okay. Yes, it's really loud. <laughs> the kids have arrived. <laughs> I'm actually getting distracted because I want to have fun with the kids. So, uh, thanks again. So, uh, obviously, we've been you know, working to get everybody into DLO. We're about a little over two thirds there, and hopefully, now we should get most people into there. But more importantly, is the interaction that, that everyone has. So, as Tanis mentioned. I'm going to do a little bit of a, uh, I'm going to share my screen and demonstrate um, some of the things that are important as far as what I know in terms of using DLO. Like Tana says, it's actually new to me, so I'm learning a lot as we go. Uh, so I'm going to try to highlight some important things. If you have questions, um, try to send them perhaps out on Twitter with the UDG Agora tags. Uh, my colleagues will be watching that. Uh, you can also possibly send someone a direct message or even ask a question on DLO. And so that's why I have all my comrades here to help me pay attention to everything because my focus sometimes gets 
limited. So uh, for now, I'm going to switch to uh, sharing my screen, and I'm going to go over to Delo. And so um, just so you know that um, if you can tell me that you're seeing my screen, okay. Yeah, it looks everybody. good, Alan. Okay, thank you. Um, I can't see the Hangout, so I'm going to count on my colleagues there to yell at me to say slow down or to show me that again. So, of course, this is the dlo.theagoraonline.net. Many of you have found it there. As we mentioned in our messages, um, this is a public site right now. I am not logged in, so there are certain parts that everybody on the Internet, if they're really curious, can find out about DLO, and they can read what is going on in the two primary uh, categories of information that you see at the top. So under Noticias, these are our announcements, and these are places where we try to let you know um, what is going on, such as the announcement for um, this event that we have here. And in the announcements, there, there are us talking to you, uh, but if you do have a question, um, such as the bottom here, um, you can ask questions, and so it is like a discussion board. Um, but you can actually post new questions in this DLR. So this is the informational category. There is a subcategory called using DLO, and this is a place where I've been trying to, um, and hopefully other people may um, put in certain tips that will help you learn how to use uh, the system. The other area that we set up, we call it the Open Agora, and this is a general place for everybody who is participating in the project, all 300 of us, when we get everybody there, where you can not only ask, you can, re you can reply, you can read, but you can also start new questions. So um, this is sort of like the big room where everybody who is present in uh, Guadalajara uh, for both weeks are actually all together in one giant space. This helps because we can ask and talk to everybody. It's hard to hear in a group of 300 people. Um, so this would be a place for questions or ideas that would be perhaps of interest or appropriate mm -hmm. to everybody. Um, Terry made a suggestion, we made this subgroup called Discipline, that we might want to set up a place for people who are in different groups to say, hey, I teach geology, I'm looking for someone to help me out teach timelines, or um, I teach nutrition. And so because we have so many people in different groups um, who work in the same discipline, you might be able to find people who teach the same subject and have a conversation here. So these are the general areas, and this is all that you can see without logging in. Um, and if a general person comes to the site, they can't reply because they're not logged in. So I'm going to log in as a general user. I'm not going to be CogDog. I'm going to be this character named Dogbot. Don't ask me what that means. And so I am now pretty much like those of you who are new um, to DLO, who have just created your account. So it looks very similar. I can see those same two categories, but now I've got a third thing that I can see. And I've been assigned to this group with Alan. I don't really know who he is, if he's any good as an instructor, but this is my group of 40 people, a smaller group, and so these are conversations that only people in Alan Levine's group, and apparently people seem to think this is a good group because they say DLO, DLO, DLO. And so when I come in here, this is a place for just people in my group to have um, conversations. And you can see from the way the activity is listed, um, the users list all the different people who participated you can see which are more active because this one has 24 replies, which one's been viewed the most, um, and when the most recent activity is. So this may help you figure out um, what you want to read. And, Alan? Yes? I think they think it's good because you keep telling them that it's the best group. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what I've heard. I don't really know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know Alan very well. Um, so we had some fun in our first group. I asked them, since people had fun with memes, to create something to demonstrate what their superpower is. And so we've had a lot of response here. And we know everybody likes memes, and we're having a lot of fun with this. 
Um, but you can see these are all discussions that people have done. And I look at this one by Ken Bauer. This guy does um, memes all the time. You can do things. If you click the little heart, that's a like button. And that does a couple things. It signals to Ken that, hey, somebody likes me. Um, it helps boost that activity. Um, so you can use the like button to indicate a positive reaction to something. Um, you can also, if you want to remember something, the other icon is a bookmark. And this works like in your browser. So it helps you save important um, messages or topics. Because as we do, you're going to read many things. And you may forget what had happened. So um, there's a way that I'll show you that you can see all your bookmarks. So I can go back to my group page. Um, there is also, with every group description, a list of everybody who is in my group. Um, so you can see who your other colleagues are. Um, you can actually send them messages. So this is the way we work in a group smaller than 300, but larger than the three of your triad. Everybody okay there? I hear scribbling on pens, on paper. Um, one thing that we suggest everybody do early is, like many social media sites, is to uh, customize your account. So this um, top menu, I hear a lot of noise there. I hear a lot of stuff there. Um, that was me. Sorry. I'm drawing a picture. Okay. Um, there are a couple things that are helpful to you to customize this for yourself. First of all, as I mentioned, if you start bookmarking things in DLO, this link will show you bookmarks, everything you bookmarked. But the important one that I would like everybody to do um, within the next few days is to update their preferences because this is how we know who you are. So when I come in this dog bot, I don't have a picture. It just makes one out of a D because that's the first letter in my username. So the first thing you can say is, um, I can fill in my name so when I show up on the site, it'll not only have my username of Dogbot, which you can use like Twitter to reference me, but I can say um, my real name is Robot Dog, Robot Doggy. Um, if you want, if the email you signed up with is not the same, you can change that. If you forgot your password, you can reset your password. Um, but now I can say, I don't want that D to represent me, so I want to change my icon. So I'm going to um, upload a picture that I have on my computer. So I've prepared a certain picture um, that I'm going to use. And now I have an icon um, that's going to represent me. Sometimes it doesn't show up uh, quite away, but that icon should be there. Um, you can also, and I'll show you, the site creates a little profile page for you. So if I don't want a plain black background, um, I can pick another picture that I have that I want to show up um, to represent on the top of my profile page um, the image that will be used. And there's a, another image that's my desert surrealistic picture. Um, there's a smaller pop-up that will show up for my name um, that's called a card. And so you could use the same image, but because I'm a robot dog, um, I'm going to use um, my circuit board uh, image. And uh, when I'm done all this, I'll show you how all this plays out. Um, for those who prefer um, to have the DLO site, the commands, and the menus, right now it's set for English as a default language, but you can change the um, language to Spanish. So all the menus and the commands that's built into the software um, will be in Spanish. Or you can pick any other language that you prefer. Um, you can also uh, write a little profile. Um, I am a robot dog that loves UDG Agora. Um, and you may want to write something more sophisticated than that. Um, you can put links and you can do some formatting um, in it for now. Um, I can put in my, um, my um, username. Um, the location doesn't matter. If I want to put in my blog, this is all information that will go um, onto my profile. You may want to explore as you use DLO um, some of these options. 
this is as notifications of when new activity happens. So some people like to get many notifications by email. Some people find it annoying. So you can change some of these settings um, to control how often or how much DLO um, sends you um, via email. There is also um, a thing called desktop notifications, which means you get a little pop-up um, window in the top right corner of your computer um, whenever something happens that de deserves your attention on DLO. Um, I don't have it turned on for this account. And so these are all ways that you can customize um, your appearance. Um, okay, Alan? Yes. Can I suggest we just pause for a second and either Kike or Ken just do a super brief recap in Spanish? Um, oh, thank just, you. just in case. Do <laughs> Kike or you? Pues, a ver, aquí lo que estamos explorando es las posibilidades de configuración de las cuentas de Dilo. Bueno, eh, eh, en esta pantalla vemos este varios eh, campos de texto en donde nosotros podemos configurar desde nuestro nombre de usuario, podemos eh, este, establecer nuestra contraseña en dado caso de que la necesitemos cambiar y también podemos eh, configurar una imagen que nos represente el, el avatar que, que, que nosotros eh, podamos subir. Esto es importante para saber quién está contribuyendo, quién está participando de, los, de, de las conversaciones que ocurren en Dilo, ¿no? Y pues nosotros este, también podemos establecer eh, eh, perfiles en donde podemos eh, configurar imágenes como fondo, entonces es muy fácil que, que, que podamos cambiar, en este caso, eh, en la cuenta que está usando Alan como ejemplo, es la cuenta de, del perrito robot, y entonces, como, eh, como es un robot, está poniendo ahí en su tarjeta de, de, de usuario un fondo que tiene que ver con sus circuitos, etcétera, ¿no? Todos podemos poner imágenes que, que, que representen algo para nosotros o que sean imágenes favoritas. Y bueno, en la Keep parte de abajo... Scroll sí. up, Alan. There you go. Good. No, nosotros, the other way. Sorry. Ajá. There nosotros, you go. Perfect. Nosotros podemos incluir nuestro nombre de, de, de usuario en Twitter, nosotros podemos... Eh, eh, escribir en qué si, en lugar geográficamente nos encontramos, podemos ahí poner Guadalajara, México, etcétera Podemos poner una liga a nuestro sitio web, toda esta información va a aparecer en nuestro perfil de usuario. este También eh, vamos a poder cambiar toda la interfaz de, de, de la plataforma de Dilo al idioma que nosotros queramos, ¿no? podemos configurarlo en español para poderlo entender mejor. Y un aspecto muy importante tiene que ver con las notificaciones. Es decir, si yo quiero que, por ejemplo, me llegue un correo electrónico cada que alguien haya contribuido o participado en un hilo de discusión de, de, del foro de mi grupo, ¿no? Entonces yo puedo eh, eh, activar o desactivar esta opción para ser notificado eh, eh, vía correo electrónico al respecto de la actividad en Dilo. No sé si, Ken, quieras eh, decir algo... No, creo que cubriste todo. Realmente Nancy está viendo, ah, pues no, Kike memorizó todo, pero está siguiendo realmente la forma. Entonces, uh, sí. pues realmente Alan habló también en la otra pantalla. Alan, if you want to go back to um, your group. Yes, let me, uh, let me, let me do a um, quick review of that. I'm yeah, going to give Kike a break. Okay, I'm going to save the changes. Okay, um, yeah, give Cog Dog some pictures. Or, sorry, Dogbot. Dogbot. Uh, j just before we do that, to show you, um, see if happened. If my profile now um, has the background picture, um, it's got my icon, mm -hmm. it's got my website, it's awesome. got my, my profile, and it also um, I haven't had any activity, but it keeps track of everything you've done. Yeah. You want to go back to yep. yeah? There you go. So go to your group like you did earlier. Entonces, realmente lo que estamos mostrando aquí, Alan, es que cada participante tiene los, los foros generales y también el foro de su grupo, que son aproximadamente 40, 45 personas, 15 triads. Y pues aquí todos nosotros podemos participar. Puedes entrar y ver lo que está, las discusiones de otros y participar. Podemos ver que hay un columna de cuál es el tópico. El usuario se está mostrando quién está participando en ese este tópico. Uh, los replies está diciendo pues cuántos respuestas hay en ese tópico y vistas y también la última actividad. 
invitamos a todos a poner su propio tópico. So, Alan, you can probably scroll down on the bottom, I think, for creating a new topic is there, right? Yes. I can just see it there. Entonces, no es solamente ver lo que está escribiendo los otros y compartiendo, y, y pues bienvenidos a hacerlo, pero también les invitamos a compartir sus experiencias aquí. Estás en el grupo con 40 y algunos otros profesores que están trabajando juntos con Alan, y realmente no tanto trabajando con Alan, trabajando entre ellos, y Alan es, es, es su guía de, de, del grupo. Y invitadísimos a entrar aquí y compartir lo que están haciendo con sus alumnos en sus grupos, en, en, en sus clases. Y eso es la idea de Dilo, realmente es compartir sus experiencias en esos grupos macros de 40 y a lo mejor llevarlo hasta arriba y participar a nivel de 300. And I think I covered pretty well everything. What do you think, Kike? <laughs> Me parece muy bien. Okay. Is it okay to explain the composition? Yeah, it's all yours. Okay. Alan, go for it in English. Okay, okay. gracias. Thank, thank you. That's a big help, obviously. Uh, so when you write in DLO, it's an editing interface like many other packages. It's not very sophisticated, but you can do, obviously, bold and italic. Um, on the left side is more of a code view. On the right side is a live preview. So as we see, as I make changes, I can edit. Um, one thing you can do, um, which you can't see because I'm only sharing Google Hangout, if I want to use an image, um, I can just drag it from my desktop, and I'm going to drop the image right into the editor, and I just put my dog picture in there. Um, you can also upload via this button here. You can upload other files, um, images um, that you can select, or if you know where they are on the web, Obviously, we can make, we can do um, list. Mm -hmm. And so you might notice as I'm typing, there are things popping up at the top. And this is something that DLO, or actually the software is called Discourse, does. It knows that I'm a new user. And so it's given me a few little suggestions. Does this title sound interesting? Um, is it a good summary? And so these are some writing prompts that as you become more experienced in DLO, you will not see. These are getting started. Um, it does do something to say, hey, what you're writing so far sounds very similar mm -hmm. to what's been written. Um, so you may want to think about linking to it or maybe changing what you're writing so it's more unique than what has been written. Mm -hmm. um, so we can, as you can see, I can do, I'm adding um, a bulleted list. So there are basic um, editing pieces you can do. Um, you can also, there's a whole range of little um, emoticons that you can add um, to your message. Many people um, like using that. So the more you write, you'll find you'll get um, experienced um, in how to use DLO. I'm going to show two more things. I'm not going to um, leave this message because it's not very um, useful. but. Um, one um, very useful thing is um, the fact that we can just write as if we just have something to say, but often we may want to reply to someone um, and um, use and be able to reference their work um, before. So um, I'm having a conversation with Carlos here, and let me find a little bit of a better extent. Here we go. I am starting here also. Could you or any other guy or gal check my first project? And so if I want to reply, I can just reply, press button, and start typing. But if I highlight a certain portion of Carlos's message, it says, quote, reply. And now when I start writing, I actually have that as part of my message. And so um, I would love to to see your blog post. So this is a way of connecting what I am writing um, to what Carlos has, has written um, already. So it adds a little bit more of a connection between the work that people do. Um, the other thing when we're writing is um, I think that, and if you use the at symbol, you can actually reference other people. So I could say Nancy has a good post on this, and also at um, 
Amelia um, said something important. And you can see what happens is on the right side, it's actually going to create a link to that person's account. So it works very well in DLO to reference um, other people's work. Are we okay, folks? Yep. Um, also, you might want to mention, Alan, when you do mention these people in the post, it's kind of like Twitter, that they're going to get an alert um, in yep. their email box, especially if they have alerts turned on, so they know they've been mentioned in the conversation. Thank you. And that, that's a good idea. Um, you can see at the top, I have a little uh, button here that um, sort of gives me some notifications. Anytime you post something or reply something, you're telling DLO that you want to hear when other people respond to you. That's mm -hmm. very good. Um, there are other ways you can set what you get notified. So if I want to know every time something happens in Note to See Us, because that's important announcements, um, when I go into a category, um, on this top right menu, these are the current ways that um, I can be informed. So the default is regular, so I only get notified if someone mentions my name or replies um, to me um, in this category. Um, I can also say I want to uh, track, so I just get notified of every time something new appears in this category, or I can say I want to know everything that goes on this category. I can say watching. I want to know when there's a new topic, and I want to know every time someone replies. So using these um, notification systems allows you to stay in touch with what is going on in other parts of DLO. Awesome. I just learned something. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool, I think. Um, also, again, for getting around, you can see that under whenever there's a category menu, I can jump right away back to my Allen's group. Um, menu without necessarily having to go all the way back um, to the top. Mm -hmm. I want to show one more thing about editing um, yeah. that is pretty cool that I just discovered um, is that um, you can also see how bad in my post. Um, and then we'll, we'll let Kike jump in with some Spanish translation here in a sec too. Okay. Um, Let's Tip. see what happens uh, when I want to use video. So if you have a, uh, maybe a YouTube or Vimeo uh, video that you may want to show in your post, you can link to it, but that means someone has to leave and go watch it. Um, if I have, this is, uh, I love this video that Gerardo shared of him doing a voiceover for George Clooney in a coffee commercial. And if this is highly relevant to my discussion, I'm going to copy the link to this video, and if I just go and put it on a new line and hit return, if you, you can see on the right that it's going to embed the video right into my post. So you can automatically get embeds um, for YouTube videos um, within your post, so people can watch it in the context of um, what you have written. Um, I have found also for SoundCloud, um, here's Alma's um, little... Um, exercise that she did um, when we were together and if this is relevant to me um, I made an important um, recording of my class working on the project what do you hear this is not maybe the best prompt um, when I put the SoundCloud URL in um, this is a little tricky. The preview doesn't show it exactly, but when I publish this, the SoundCloud player will be um, embedded right into um, my post. Um, you can also do the same with Twitter. So if you have the link to a single tweet, um, Alejandro was having his students do some tweeting of some things they're doing in class just today. I had a great time watching this. Um, if I put this on a blank line um, and I scroll down and look, um, it doesn't exactly embed the full tweet, but it actually makes it so it's a reference and easy um, to jump to it. So if I post this, um, now you can see you get the YouTube video, you get this full SoundCloud, um, and you at least get the tweet. You don't get the media that's embedded in the tweet. So, um, Alan? Yes. Can I interrupt just for one second? We've yes. gotten a couple of tweets of people who um, don't quite 
realize that they're watching, not participating in the Hangout. So I thought at this moment it's worth saying, if you've just joined us, this is a Hangout on air. So what we're doing is we're broadcasting and recording at the same time. You can add questions or comments by uh, tweeting and using the hashtag, there's my hashtag sign, UDGagora at any minute, and we're watching that, and we'll bring it back in. Okay, back to you, Alan. Thank you, and that, that is good to mention. With a Google Hangout, you can have, I forget if the limit is 10 or 15 people actually on camera um, who can participate. Um, so it is not a type of thing where you have 300 people inside of a shared presentation session. Um, but so you can watch and you can ask questions through a number of uh, forms. In subsequent weeks, we hope to be looking perhaps for volunteers who can join us um, onto the, the Hangout side so you can actually be part of these uh, conversations. Um, so for now, this is more of us doing a broadcast to you to communicate um, and hopefully explain DLO a little bit more. Um, and other sessions that we do in Google Hangouts will be run a little bit differently. Thank you, Nancy. Okay, and just I just have to say one more thing because in Twitter, I don't know if you can see this, this is probably totally unviewable, but here is the excitement coming from a classroom. <laughs> they tweeted the picture, so in, in actually real time, we're connected out to uh, one of our team's classroom. Well, hang on, let and, me and just... If you, if you look, if you open up Twitter and look at the uh, Agora Tri 83 or the uh, UDG Agora and uh, screen share, you can show that tweet from Javier Garcia Alba. Okay, I'm. I'm it's pretty cool. <laughs> I, I need to uh, uh, hashtag. Hashtag. See how, see how I fast I can do this. Too Agora. excited. Uh, and Gerardo, I hope that you uh, got my message on Twitter if you're watching this. Right, so so. We're, we're doing this, um, my friend John Smith calls this straddling platforms. And in fact, we're straddling DLO and Hangouts and Twitter all at once, which is also why there are more than just Alan running this Hangout, because it really takes uh, teamwork to straddle platforms, but it's just fabulous because there's this real-time feedback that's happening right freaking now. <laughs> this is fantastic. And so, um, and this brings up, um, let me go back, I'm going to stop sharing so we can move into conversation mode. Well, we've um, got to translate first. Okay. Yeah, let Kike jump in. And the other thing is, Alan, or Nancy, as well as having live that we're all coordinating this, is anyone who's not here can watch this later. Yeah. Yeah. Bueno. Kike. Muy bien. Pues bueno, eh, lo que estábamos viendo eh, hace poquito eran las posibilidades que nos ofrece la plataforma para componer mensajes nuevos, ¿no? Ahí Alan nos estaba eh, mostrando cómo en el, hay un cuadro de diálogo para escribir nuevos mensajes, nuevos hilos de discusión dentro del de grupo de cada quien, dentro de... Eh, eh, los foros, digamos, que, que se incluyen en la plataforma, y Alan nos estaba mostrando cómo hay posibilidades para que insertemos contenido multimedia dentro de, de, de estas publicaciones, ¿no? Entonces es muy fácil que si, por ejemplo, tenemos un video de YouTube, lo único que tenemos que hacer es copiar eh, la dirección de este video, la pegamos en nuestro cuadro de diálogo para componer un mensaje nuevo, y del lado derecho de, la, de, de, de este cuadro de diálogo vamos a tener una vista previa de cómo se inserta ese video en los mensajes nuevos a través de la plataforma, ¿no? Entonces, ahora nos estaba mostrando cómo podemos insertar videos de YouTube, podemos insertar audios que estemos eh, que, que guardemos en SoundCloud, que es otra aplicación, y también podemos eh, eh, insertar tweets eh, cuando tenemos la dirección eh, completa de un tweet, ¿no? Entonces, esta plataforma nos ofrece, nos ofrece varias posibilidades para eh, enriquecer nuestros mensajes que estamos componiendo como parte de los foros con contenido multimedia. Mm -hmm. Creo que sí fue todo ahí, Kike. Yeah, I think he covered pretty well everything there, Alan. He's okay. amazing. He's amazing. And so um, normally I wouldn't do this live, but we've got someone who's having trouble uh, watching the Google uh, Live. And so I thought it'd be a good chance to maybe troubleshoot that well, because prob he's probably not the only one, but he's getting the, the invitation and not the link into the actual Hangout. Because mm. the invitation is to watch on the Google right. Plus page. But right. he's, he's not getting into the Google Plus page. 
Interesting. I'm gonna I, try it here. I would need to know more what it means. I need to know what he is saying. Okay, it's in Twitter. Uh, there's, there's sometimes the video settings that um, I had to click a couple buttons to get it to play in Safari. Yeah. Okay, yeah. does someone want to... We don't know what he's... Uh, in general, uh, Hangouts are going to work, work much better in Chrome because it is a Google browser. Um, okay. So let me let me tweet that to him. So you know, this is yeah. how we connect our communities. Um, you know, if, if you're having trouble, one thing you can do that helps us figure out is to describe an error message or to take a screenshot. A screenshot. Um, he did take a screenshot. Okay. I see that. <laughs> I'm not seeing this tweet. It's not. It doesn't have a more. hashtag. Oh, okay, that's why. Yeah. Okay. I just copy paste the link. I can see the buffer. So this is what happens when you do things live. Um, things go wrong, and that's kind of how life is. And we keep talking as other people are typing and responding. So I, I just Ken and I will troubleshoot with him, but okay. I just want to make visible that practice because when you're first getting into a new online space. These things happen all the time. Mm -hmm. So helping each other is super important. And there will be some challenges, and don't worry. Keep going. The other okay. thing that's important, we'll Nancy, I mentioned as well, Nancy and Ellen, is if you're watching the stream via, you can see it on YouTube or within the Google Plus area for the, for the event, um, it's going to have like at least a 10-second delay. So those of us that are on live here, we have to realize if we ask a question, you got to wait to see if the answer shows up. That's true, and, and quite possibly I should have just tweeted the YouTube link then. The yeah, yes. that for next time. Yep. Do you have that? Should we tweet that? Yeah, it's it's right. It's in the. Um, I'll dig it up. I got it. It's in the links. There's a little links button in the. Which Google seems to uh, here it is. Mm -hmm. I got it, Alan. Oops. No, yeah, I tweeted. I just pasted the wrong link. Okay, thanks, Ken. So. Um, Tennis had to step away, but I, I want to maybe other people um, because obviously we're just we're sorting through a lot of things this week and getting people into DLO. Um, maybe share some observations of um, what you have seen, um, or maybe you know what you think might help people who are just trying to figure out this crazy space. You know, and and when you know what we were just talking about about getting new to this a different system, a different interface, which sometimes doesn't work. Um, this is also our secret way of working on this idea of having empathy for your students when you ask them to do something new because what you are feeling right now with trying to figure out this is what they feel when we give them something new. Yeah, yep. very much so. Yeah, many of us have done these Hangouts many times so we forget the difficulties when you start it. And I'm going to wave to Gerardo, who says he's listening. Hola, Gerardo. <laughs> I, I linked the YouTube uh, direct link to watch this in YouTube on the UDG Agora hashtag, and I just checked, and it was freaking me out because I was being delayed on one screen and live on another. Yeah, you can't it do works. that. Yeah, it freaks you out. So, um, confuse Yazo, empathy, Nancy's shining up. <laughs> nice. Nancy what else? Card. What else we got on the list there, Alan? You think I have a list, Ken? Yeah. I have something. <laughs> I call on Nancy. <laughs> so, um, one of the things that I think is useful re-expressing is that DLO is not everything. Right. And so I was thinking about how do we express that, that there's three levels going on during this eight-week period. The most important level is professors taking two to four challenges and applying them in a way that has meaning and, and it increases engagement or performance or results in their classroom. So that's, that's the me thing. I am doing this as professor of whatever. The second is, is the immediate um, support of the triads. So uh, anywhere between three and five people have agreed to support each other, give each other feedback, on a weekly basis throughout that experimentation period. And that is the most important support mechanism. And then the third is DLO, and DLO has, in my mind, two really important functions. One is knowledge sharing across 300. So you've gone from one to three, 
the 300, and we've grouped the 342 just because that's a more humane size, but DLO is really knowledge sharing. Um, and then the second thing that DLO can be a mechanism for sharing how you got your student feedback, which is, you know, the completion part of the experiment. So DLO, and, and that's important for knowledge sharing because whatever you learn from your students would be something, I think, of interest to everybody. So I made a little picture to think of the kind of three levels here. And let me see if I can... Pull it back a bit, Nancy. Pull, uh, tell me when I'm okay. A little bit more. Okay, that looks good. Your camera's a little bit out of focus. But that's oh, okay. I can, I can fix that. You have, you have like, the um, Hollywood, like, soft mm -hmm. ro romantic face. We'll, we'll post this online. It's in Twitter, too. That's a book yeah. in there. So, you know, if DLO is not the perfect thing for you, don't worry. That's not the most important thing. The most important thing is implementing in your classroom with meaning and using your triad up to five people to support that process. Does that make any sense? Claro. <laughs> Clarísimo. Clarísimo. That's little. That's little. Tiny. That's a tiny bit of clarity, right, Ken? No, that'll be clarito. <laughs> completely clear. I, I would... Um, but I think that's important that it's not everything. Um, some things maybe maybe to clarify, um, they keep calling us instructors, but um, mm. do not do not write to me in DLO and expect me to say good or bad. Um, um, write to everybody, and so we we want you to use your entire group of forty two or three or three hundred. Um, to give and get feedback from each other um, because we can't we're not grading you. And so we, we are here just to sort of like nudge you along in, in that process. Okay. What have, you, what have you guys seen so far in DLO besides everybody like trying to figure out how to get in? And Javier Cruz got the video going, so that's cool. He's a good man. Trying to sh troubleshoot something else here. I might also say, like, um, I was very excited to see Alejandro's um, class. They were tweeting out this morning photos and memes of what they were doing. Um, except I have no idea exactly um, what the context was. So um, wherever you're, like, describing or sharing this, it helps us to figure out what, what was the thing you were asking your students to do, what was the activity. Um, it's great to see all the stuff come in, but... Um, because we're not there, we don't know um, the thing that you're really trying. Describe context purpose. Yeah, Kike, you want to say any of this in Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> or, better yet, say what you think yeah. in Spanish. It Ay, ay, ay. Perdón, ¿qué, ¿qué necesito decir? Que quieres agregar algo en español ahí de, de, del tópico que estamos viendo y que deben, pues a lo mejor lo estoy diciendo yo, que Dilo no es todo, no tienen que entrar a Dilo. Realmente lo importante es que están trabajando con sus grupos, sus alumnos en sus salones de clases y sus cursos. El punto de Dilo y el punto de eso de Google Hangouts y Twitter son puro medios y comunicación de apoyo. Y, y la idea de Dilo es intentar juntar esos grupos de tres en grupos de 45 con un instructor. Lo que dijo Alan también, Alan no es el maestro y nosotros no somos maestros de ustedes. Ustedes están trabajando y estamos intentando guiarlos un poco durante el el camino de, de cinco semanas, de ocho semanas de, de online. No sé si quieres agregar algo ahí, Kike. Pues digo, eso me parece importante que, que, que eh, di, distribuyamos todo lo que estamos haciendo, eh, entender que podemos formar parte de los flujos conversacionales en Twitter, entender que podemos eh, eh, participar con nuestra triada y con el resto de los compañeros que compartimos instructor en Dilo, y a final de cuentas de lo que se trata es nutrirnos de todos los conocimientos, de, de, de to, toda la retroalimentación que nos van a brindar tanto nuestros compañeros de triada como el, los otros 45, como los 300, para hacer las mejores implementaciones, ¿no? Y pues al final de cuentas sentirnos orgullosos de que estamos impulsando esta, esta parte de, 
eh, sacar provecho de los dispositivos móviles en nuestra práctica docente. Entonces, ya sea eh, haciéndolo a través de Dilo, ya sea haciéndolo a través de los flujos conversacionales en Twitter, el chiste es que nos inspiremos y que tratemos de implementar cosas que eh, nuestros estudiantes encuentren como una forma relevante de llegarse a aprendizaje y nuevos conocimientos, ¿no? I like this. Anna's just tweeted out a, a new word for us, Nancy. Video confusion. <laughs> I mean, the world it unfolds at all times in interesting ways. I was going to try and see if I could uh, well, show it did, that. We're the vertical, the horizontal. <laughs> well, all forms of media, we have confusiasmo. <laughs> Así es. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, so basically what I said is that, like Nancy was saying, these are all different communication mediums, and, and the Twitter, the DLO, the, the Hangouts, and, and the real important thing is what's happening in your classrooms. Absolutely. I, I also want to say, first of all, um, I mean, we saw a fair amount of Twitter activity when we were in Guadalajara, but just <laughs> in the last two weeks, I mean, my, my Twitter's exploding, which is a great thing. Um, so, I mean, we have people, students tweeting at us. Um, we have a lot of people... Um, doing the, um, the, the daily tries, which is really exciting. And when we were discussing, um, as we were preparing for this before we went live on the air, um, we've been noticing that people, I mean, a lot of times people doing the daily try intentionally, it's kind of silly. It's just meant to give you some practice mm -hmm. to do something online and share it. Um, but now we're starting to see people actually be thinking about and maybe making some connections with some of these activities uh, to their teaching or their class or their thinking? I mean, what do you guys think about that? Yes, I get a nod. I think, I think Terry can talk. I'm talking, so I'm like, trying to shut up. The, the microphone Jerry's doesn't turning. pick up when your head moves, Nancy. <laughs> you got to unmute your mic, Terry. <laughs> I know, I keep coughing, though, and every time I cough, it says, hey, you should unmute your mic if you want to talk to people. So <laughs> I was trying not to blow your ears out. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> Is there anything you've seen going on in, in the last you know, week or two since we've ramped Switching up? Switching from the... kind of silliness of the, the – well, not silliness, but um, well, yeah, basic, the, basicness to, to deep. The fo a little more focus towards um, not just making the fun things, but what can we actually do with the fun things that we're making. Yeah, I've been really like, – like my Twitter's blowing up too, like Alan said, and watching – I'm trying to find a post from earlier today, actually, asking about web conferencing, and I've totally lost it. I keep going back through the stream because I want to answer it. And so, yeah, there's a, I'm, I'm noticing a lot. And people sort of um, compressing their daily tries, doing five and six in a day, and it's, um, it's really exciting to watch. And seeing from the classrooms is really great, especially. Mm -hmm. So I want to note that I really see that the, the tries are becoming a lot more focused on how will this matter in my classroom versus let me just try the skill. So that's been yeah. really fun to watch. And I get one thing I've been nudging my group a little bit with is um, the memes really seem to catch on with a lot of people. Obviously um, it's fun and, and you know to get some attention it's kind of like it's like shouting you know something and, and getting drawing attention in a way that makes people smile and um, I would like to think also that there are other ways you can think about using because what you're basically doing is you're combining short text with an image to express something and so there are other things you can express besides silliness and goofiness you know so you can use it to maybe present you know contrasting viewpoints or you can you know pose serious questions um, that can be represented in the same meme like um, sort of a form and so um, as people are doing, um, some of my group is, I haven't really exactly worked out what Jose Luis is doing, but he's doing memes with arthropods, um, which is kind of interesting, because I don't know if arthropods get much social, you know, mojo out there, or if people think about arthropods. Um, but, you know, but I, I'm not exactly 100% sure of um, what the prompt is with his class. I think he's, like, trying to get them at first to use the meme to suggest when they think of arthropods, what comes to their mind. And then maybe later they'll come back and sort of revisit that first impression. So I encourage everybody to think about, take that idea of the meme and what can you do to sort of take that to another level or um, utilize that in a different way. Here's I looked at that, at that one too and it looked to me a little bit almost like um, the concept of what an arthropod and, and stuff. So, yeah. 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 
And I mean, you could do things like try to figure out what are similarities and differences between the way other people represent arthropods, and maybe can you can you do that visually? Yeah. Yeah, I have first semester students, and I use the memes a lot just to just to get them engaged and get them going, and that's fine too. But you definitely want to go deeper. That's good. So uh, we're kind of we don't have to go a full hour, guys. You know, we can go as long as we need to. Um, obviously, people in Guadalajara need to do whatever they need to do at the end of the noon hour. Um, and so I want to um, thank everybody for showing up. And uh, for those who are able to watch live, we're fantastic to have you here. Um, again, you can watch it on archive later. There tentatively will be one of these every week. Um, and next week, I, I can't remember the, the topic, but we're going to be starting moving into, um, again, thinking about um, what came out of your um, discussion of your first practical idea that you're going to put into place. Um, so each one of these formats will be a little bit different and probably um, will have... I'm trying to figure out what Nancy's doing with her camera. It, it gets my camera back in focus because when, <laughs> when I hold the pieces of paper up, it screws up the focus. But next week, is, next week is on how do we think about getting student feedback and you know the kind of concept, what are the range and po of possibilities for formative evaluation. So if you're thinking, well, I've got an idea of how I want to do this challenge in the classroom, but you haven't thought about how I get, you know, meaningful student feedback instead of like, oh, that was cool, because that doesn't give you um, an understanding, did that help the student in the learning objective or in their engagement or whatever. So next week is on, you know, basically formative evaluation. So if this is an area of strong interest or talent and you'd like to be part of that hangout, let us know, and you could be the expert because my guess is there's got to be some great formative evaluation experts in our team okay so I think it's everybody time to say goodbye Agora see you next adios. week adios adios hasta la próxima semana gracias okay. alright right. <laughs> right, I'm going to stop the broadcast and we'll see you next week